You're watching ITV News Central. Still to come tonight, life after Corrie. We talk to Worcestershire's Mark Bayliss ahead of tonight's explosive episode. Leading scientists are warning we faith, face a health catastrophe because of the rise in so-called superbugs. The overuse of antibiotics is leading to an increase in drug-resistant strains of diseases like TB and malaria. And there's a warning now that unless there's urgent action, we may see the end of operations like organ transplants, cancer treatments, knee and hip replacements, and ultimately even a grazed knee could prove fatal. Well, experts from the University of Warwick and University of Birmingham are working closely with Antibiotic Research UK to try to develop new effective drugs. John Hill reports. Harrowing scenes as communities in West Africa battle against the Ebola virus. It's still too early to say just how many lives this outbreak will claim. But experts are now warning this crisis could be dwarfed by another looming on the horizon, the rise of the antibiotic-resistant superbug. Bacteria are now making many antibiotics ineffective, and the claim is that if new drugs aren't developed, we could face an almost unthinkable scenario where minor infections could once again kill. Ebola is a great risk in West Africa, as, as we can see. I mean, thousands have already died, and you know, it's postulated that you know, many more thousands are going to die. But if you look at what's happened in the West, there have been only a few isolated cases. But in the case of antibiotic-resistant infections, it's going to affect everybody in the UK. We will all be at risk simply because those, will be, those infections will be easily transmitted from one person to another. It's estimated that there are 400,000 cases of reported antibiotic-resistant infections, with 25,000 deaths each year in the European Union. In the UK, the figure is close to 5,000 deaths per year. Antibiotics are given for just a short course of treatment, and so for the big drugs firms, sales are very limited. In fact, only five new types of antibiotics have been introduced since the 1960s. OK, so I'm just going to take your blood pressure this morning. But GPs like Mark Holmes say patients must accept that many common ailments don't require antibiotics. Only 10% of sore throats um, will be um, responsive to an antibiotic. So there's some clear messages there about um, uh, educating patients about what is a viral infection and what is a bacterial infection that, that would be treatable by an antibiotic. Within the next five or ten years we could be seeing widespread resistance to the vast majority of antibiotics that we have. We do have a couple of last resort antibiotics which are quite, quite toxic and can be unpleasant to take and maybe not as effective as the antibiotics we routinely use. There has already been a return of TB in London. Now, Antibiotic Research UK is hoping to raise up to £30 million to pioneer at least one new antibiotic over the next five to seven years. A small price, perhaps, to prevent a return to a world where a simple scratch could mean death. John Hill, ITV News. The national and international news is just a few moments away. Let's take a look at what's coming up with Alistair Stewart. The Prime Minister in a troubling breach of security. A man barged into the PM who was then left exposed for several seconds. Unacceptable, say MPs and former bodyguards in the current climate. One of the victims of the surfing tragedy in Cornwall was a 52-year-old surgeon from Leeds. Another may have been trying to help. And... My birthday began with the water birds and the birds of the winged trees fly. The voice of Wales and one of the finest poets of the English language. It's the centenary of Dylan Thomas's birth. Join Ranveer Singh and me at 6.30. Well, we have some entertain and entertainment news now. In Coronation Street's 54-year history, there's been how many weddings? <laughs> 82, it says. I can't believe it. 82 <laughs> weddings <laughs> this week. There'll be one more to add to that list as Robin Tracy head down the aisle. Yes, Rob Donovan is played by Mark Bayliss from Stourport on Seven in Worcester. He's been talking to Caroline Whitmore ahead of tonight's explosive episode. Back in May, Tina McIntyre was killed by Rob Donovan, despite Peter Barlow taking the blame. Now, up until now, Rob has managed to keep quiet until tonight.
you're about to marry Tracy Barlow, mm -hmm. and the night before Rob's wedding, you go and confess that you murdered <laughs> Tina McIntyre. What are you doing? Yeah, he's kind of forced into it by uh, by Carla. Yeah. <laughs> I think if anyone was going to find out, it, it was always going to be Carlo because he just can't lie to her like he can lie to everyone else and, uh, and the house of cards collapse, basically. Rob actually does go on the run, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Rob! We just don't know until the last minute whether it's uh, I do or, or even if we get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? It's all very dramatic, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Sorry, I can't stop thinking about Peter. I know in my heart he didn't do it. Do they end up getting married? I think it's down to me really deciding whether I'm going to tell the police what Rob's confessed to me and um, it's kind of all on my shoulders as to whether Tracy Barlow gets her day or not. And I think um, if we did tell, it might ruin it. <laughs> so we're not going to tell because that's part of the fun. I thought you were going to say then, if I did tell you, Carl, I'd have to kill you. No. And I was thinking... <laughs> she would. Yes, yeah, she would. Do I hate him for it? No. Do you go home of a night and be like, oh my goodness, I can't get Carla out of my head? I completely get her out of my head. You know, it's hard to get the, the, the lines out of your head and the energy of the day. But yeah, Carla's not with me at home with Daisy, no. No. <laughs> Daisy would have a fit. She'd be like, who's that? <laughs> uh, you spend so much time no, as your character. You Sometimes off. you spend more time as your character when you're doing a big storyline than you do being yourself. Yeah. And I don't think you waste any time to just no. get home and be yourself for the four hours you've got before you have to learn the lines for the next day and, and, get, and get to bed and then come back. A glass of wine helps actually. Yeah. Get back to yourself very yeah. quickly and then you're fine. I actually think you're the nicest killer they've ever had. <laughs> uh, thank you. We've been trying to put the audience in a situation of trying to struggle with whose side that they're actually on. So if we are actually earning that of, of feeling sorry for Rob, then, then it feels like it's a, it's a job done. I do think that the, the timeline of this storyline has, has been carried out as, as close to uh, perfection as, as we can timeline-wise. Yeah. yeah. And where do you class as, as home, Mark, and where, where did you kind of train to be an actor? Uh, home for me originally is uh, Worcestershire in the, the West Midlands. I uh, went to uh, Worcester College. I grew up in a town called Stourport on Seven, uh, flying the flag there. <laughs> um, and, and then I, I moved down to London in 97, studied at Mount View uh, Theatre School down there. And uh, I've been a, a jobbing actor since, and, and now I'm back to being a jobbing actor. So uh, you know, I, I love I love what I do. You know, so yeah. it's a massive privilege to uh, to be a, a working actor. So long may that continue, because it's a it's a tough game. And I can't actually believe I said you're the nicest killer. Is there ever, <laughs> is there ever yeah, a nice great killer? Great sentence. It's Manchester United last week. They were two 0 up at half time. One of the goals coming from the spot after a foul from Pockenoli. But any troubles the baggies showed in the first 45 were eradicated in the second half. Victor and Ichabi pulled one back and the fighting spirit continued. In the dying moments of the game, West Brom were awarded a penalty. Berahino stepped up and secured the late equaliser. Stoke City travelled to high-flying Southampton, who were fresh off the back of an 8-0 victory over Sunderland. But they left without any points after Mane's fast reactions granted the host the only goal of the game. Juve came close for Stoke, but it wasn't to be. One point from their last three games as they travelled to Swansea. Signs of maybe a dip in confidence for Leicester. And things certainly looked that way when confusion at the back almost very nearly ended up in embarrassment. A combination of clever passes cut through Leicester's defence, granting Wilfred Boney Swansea's opener. And it was a similar story for their second, Boney finding the net again. Leicester's late consolation didn't come. Cambiasso's shocker of a miss summed up their performance. <laughs>